The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. We the church age believers, why I have been exemplifying so much of doctrine in the tapes? The only reason is that we need to put number one priority for the word of the Lord in our hearts. If the treating manner of the word of the Lord is not in our hearts, then Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not going to use you for any effective ministry, including from the simple even to the greatest of works wherewith you have been called to witness unto that great Lord. The simple of the works which includes the witnessing or ambassadorship or the using of your privacy of your priesthood. And the greatest of the works which includes to reach that status quo of maximum glorification unto Christ. And all these things will not be made very much effective until and unless you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine no matter what it is. Until and unless you learn to be using rebound as a constant breath, which you take more than that, and you are being there constantly under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because Romans 8 9 tells to us the great truth of all time that why we have been termed out as Alekenicates, as new spiritual spaces in Christ, and why is it that we are not in the flesh but in the spirit? Dear brethren, this is what it has been lacking today in our pulpits. The way the Pentecostal crowd comes around and tells for them in the spirit is gibberishly jumping around and dancing around. The devil's witnesses or Jehovah's witnesses, they come around and they tell we don't believe at all the spirit. And why are all these things that are happening around? Because people are approaching the word not as a thirsty man for the water, but they are just approaching the word to speculate and to start up at their own denominations and with their own teachings and with their own pedagogy. And that's why their idiosyncrasization of their levels of thinking, which they think it is right from the KJV or from other translations, will help them to form cults and heresies and apostasies as a result. But if they would read the word of the Lord from the original languages of the scriptures, they would be enlightened under the dispensing technique of dispensations only by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when they have been controlled and living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. Then they will really understand what is the true purpose of Bible doctrine that is of so great value given among, given among, among us. So that this Bible doctrine alone can entirely change the history course. It is not the way how the presidential election has been fought. That they are going to save their country for client nation to God. It has been dependent upon the few of the believers who form a pivot. So that the perpetuation of Bible doctrine, the maturity towards the word of the Lord, Lord will protect that country because of those few pivot believers who are positive towards Bible doctrine and not by the best of the intellectual president who can rule that country for being the client nation to my God. Only you as a believer so much has been left down upon your shoulders. Without Bible doctrine, you cannot even qualify to stand to save your country. Our Lord protects us. That's what the great passage, what he writes in Jeremiah, over Jeremiah through Jeremiah 5, verses 15. And he tells to them, the people, those who have not known, whose language you have not known, whose queer you have not known, they will come and they will come and rule over you. Why is that threat for the people of Jeremiah during that period of our Lord? Because those people, they have not leaned upon Bible doctrine. They have not leaned upon Jehovah in the truth. But they were leaning upon their own selfish attitudes and selfish trends and selfish methodologies. And they were absolutely happy, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, to do what it seemed good in their own eyes. 
but not to look upon the blueprint of Bible, the action of the word of the word of the truth. During the Old Testament, they had only the law, and the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, was endowment and not an enablement, what we are enjoying now. And are we really enjoying the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives? How can you enjoy when you constantly grieve and scold God, the Holy Spirit, even by your thought, word, or deed, without using rebound? Do you think by paying your penance or guilt consciousness to be cleared and following some Christian taboos of Christian activisms and emotional based worship services or personal visiting or counseling will cause you to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? That really squenches and grieves a lot, my Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brother, and whether you take it, believe it or not. It really squelches a lot. Far less you think you are doing great work to Jehovah. The only work which Lord God, the Holy Spirit, demands in you, that you are having that garbage in your soul which has to be cleansed, and that's not possible until and unless you give a way to the entrance of Bible doctrine into your soul. Bible doctrine used figuratively as water. Lord God, the Holy Spirit used figuratively as water. And the water of pure living water has to come out from your souls. We know very well what we are doing without the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. What are we doing? Not able to cleanse the garbage, not able to pour water and cleanse it out thoroughly. Know you not, when you go for your toilet, you wash your hands with water, so that it should not smell? And how much more deep example do you want better than this? What is the importance of water for you in your life? More than that is required the word of the Lord in our soul to be cleansed, in our hearts to be circulated, so that the garbage, the mentality of our thinking could be absolutely renovated to the thinking of Christ, which could be given purely under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's not possible by any other means if you are in the flesh. And that's only possible only by the means of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When it in return can activate and energize your human spirit, and in return your human spirit can train up your soul with the Bible facets and Bible doctrine. How simple is the verse for us in Romans 8, 9, but how complex is the understanding for us to think. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In the spirit. Have you ever noticed how well that spirit will be working effectively until and unless we are not grieving him, squelching him, or lying to him, but rather being walking in the spirit, living in the spirit, and yielding the fruit of the spirit? Only when we are there constantly using a rebound more than the physical breath we take, whenever we do sin, we do sin either by thought, word, or deed, and no one can escape of this, of this ultimate truth. How do we sin? We sin by word, we sin by thought, we sin by deed. Is there any man who can tell that I have not sinned by my thought? Though it is not being made manifested outwardly, inwardly you know for your own consciousness whether you have been sinning it or not. And we are not the people to say that, Lord, I am pure from sin. If you say that, you are a liar. And second thing is that you say, that meant to say, you do not know yourself about very clearly what you are, what you are not. And that is what you and I need to understand in this unique dispensation of the church age. What we are, what is the privilege given for us, and why we have been termed out as Alakane, Kete, as new spiritual spaces in Christ. And what is the great work of responsibility laid down upon our shoulders? To look upon that spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. The marvelous depths and heights of divine grace. That is purely the divine grace of our Lord that we have been elected and we have been chosen as Alekene Ketesus in this unique dispensation of the church. It's depth in embracing us when in our sins our guilt exposed to the wrath of God and its heights and bringing us to God in Christ for everlasting blessing. And so truly does scripture teach the reality of this transition from being in Adam to our present position in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the second Adam, from where we have been turned out from position of Adam into position of Christ. That we are now spoken of as not in the flesh, not of the world, not under law, but we have been spoken in the spirit. 
and Ephesians 1 3 concludes, blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The important question for us is how far have we received these truths in our hearts? How far have we mixed faith with the truth of God concerning what He has wrought in Christ? Those who have not received this truth may be trying to work themselves into nearness to God and will be always disappointed instead of taking in simple faith the nearness and acceptance in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which His grace has given us. Those who by faith in the fact taken position of it rejoice therein and rest in the Father's presence all the time by the indwelling Trinity. But though the believer is not in the flesh, he sorrowfully finds that the flesh is in him. He learns through humbling experience to say, In me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good, saith Romans 7.18, as the great conversation between Paul and the whole sin nature. The great trouble of every growing saint is the painful consciousness of having his evil nature, pride, self-will, and lust cropping up within him. Even if it does not come out, this is his greatest enemy, which neither time nor circumstances can improve, so desperately wicked it is. And the more we are occupied with this Adamic life within, the weaker we are towards it, because it becomes an object instead of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which has to be our Christian way of life, and the mechanics to be, to attain that same thinking of our Lord, which He has given for us in Christ. That's why the exemplification of the fifth phrase, I thirst all the time, which our Lord spoke on the cross. The fulfillment of the words of Bible doctrine, the importance of it, the human nature of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rested upon Bible doctrine. And today, though we have been given the completed can of Scripture, how many of the people are really resting their souls upon Bible doctrine? And that is what you and I need to understand in this unique dispensation of the church age. Being given this great privilege, great opportunity, great work, how many of them are faithful to that work, dear brother? And that is what you and I need to understand. Because we are dealing with the divine aspect of nature, which is none other but the indwelling trinity. No matter, you may think you can deceive the people by your cleverness and cunningness. But with God, those things are not possible at all. And since we are not capable of understanding the truth of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, to enlighten us to know the real purpose wherein we have been called to the praise of His glory and His grace is of a great shame and great realization that you and I need to take into consideration that until and unless we come back to cleanse our heart with Bible doctrine, it is highly impossible to know that you have been really cleansed under the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Because it is Lord God the Holy Spirit who is going to use it, the Word. That is what only the nutrient for your soul as doctrine. And it is Lord God the Holy Spirit who can teach us and who can learn us, who can yield us to the praise of His glory and His grace. By taking that which is real to Him. And that only real thing which is absolutely fact is nothing but the Word of the Lord. There is no trustworthy information or reliable information in this world apart from the Bible. And you take it or not, no Bible or no religion book has told that though the heaven and earth will pass away, my words will not. But these were the words spoken by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to tell to you that He is the only true Lord. And be perceiving, dear brethren, your life will be led to desolation until and unless you take Bible doctrine as number one criteria. To such kind of a vain glory your life will be led, you will not find a difference between a believer and unbeliever. And those days are really happening around in this Christendom period. Why? Because Bible doctrine has not got number one priority in the pulpits. That's why. Bible doctrine has not been given the greater value which has to be given the value of a right place in our pulpits today. And Bible doctrine has been just led into astray the way these people, they think they are doing is absolutely great. And that's why we do find apostasy to the rampant because the pulpits where the pastor stand is the key person either to end apostasy or to begin apostasy. 
True and apostasy is the rejection of true and apostasy is the teaching of ice concept in the pulpits. To begin apostasy is the rejection of Bible doctrine in the pulpits. And why do we want to waste our life in those things? Which is an abomination in the sight of Lord God Almighty. That may be an abomination for Lord God Almighty view, but at the same time, it is a great desolation for you in your own life that you're going through because you are trying to seek comfort from falsehood and those who are absolved lying vanities will forsake the great mercies of Jehovah. What Lord has kept, the deep things of God, the marvelous heights, not under the flesh, not under the world, not in the law, but only in the spirit. Isn't it a great astonishing fact for us to learn and to understand? Isn't it a great truth that you and I need to understand? Isn't it a great realization that you and I need to comprehend? We need to understand the great truth of our life, dear brethren. And if we are not able to understand that great truth, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. This great judgment seat of Christ, what we are going through, what we are enjoying through, what we are learning through, will be made marvelous for you to appear with fearless. That you have done and executed in the spirit, not in the flesh. And if you are fearing to appear before that great judgment seat of Christ, you take it granted that the life that you have led is not a true one. And you are fearing to appear before that great law. In the vision of Isaiah, was not Isaiah very worried? And wasn't he told that he has seen those things? And he realized his lips are among the midst of unclean people. And he himself is a man of unclean lips. That realization should be brought in the word of the Lord when we take number one criteria for Bible back. Until and unless we do have that realization in our lives, we will never understand what is the true plan of God. And why the believer has been kept alive, even after salvation in this unique dispensation of the church. Why the believer has been given this great work in his shoulders, in his responsibility for him to tell and to proclaim the truth. And why is it we have been given the number one criteria? As allocated cases among all the spaces which Lord has created in this church, or in this world, before the angelic creation, and before the men of Israelites or in the future millennium, why Lord has blessed abundantly this church age with that great privileges and opportunities to be indwelt by the Trinity. Not that we have special caliber, but we are the most weak people of all time. But Lord has given this for us and the completed canon of scripture for us from the weak things he has to confound the strong things the foolish people have to teach the wise men what it is when they are really being under the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit can tell to this entire world the world of angelic conflict the world of angelic creation the world of physical realm or the material realm being headed by Satan what is the caliber of our Lord the power of his glory and the ministry of his work how much truth of his work and how powerful it will be all the time when we obey his word abundantly and though the remnant of the people have been left over in the pivot how it is marvelously possible for the Lord to save that country because of that pivot not by the election committee which they go through by electing such and such man he can lead us as a leader he can guide us as a mentor but only that pivot which is strong to Bible doctrine and positive enough can really change the destiny of that country, dear brethren. And Lord protects because his eyes run to and fro through the entire world, upon the entire earth, to seek and to search those people whose hearts are loyal towards Christ. So that Lord wants to show forth the strength upon those believers upon those whose hearts are absolutely loyal and he wants to use them to stand in the gap in this angelic conflict and we are being first attacked by Satan not to believe in Christ 
And after believing in Christ, do you know what? Satan wants you not to learn Bible doctrine nor come close enough to look upon the words of Christ. That's why it causes you to stay weekly once in the church. Give some penance, tithes, pay some XYZ deeds in the work of the church and get out and get lost. But not come to learn the word of the Lord. How dynamic you are, though you are an ordinary believer, you will never know until and unless you look upon the word of the Lord and the privileges given to you and the pastor teacher who has been exegeting the word can explain to you what is this unique spiritual life and what is this great unique performance by a believer in this angelic conflict. And which way, dear brother, you want to go, you decide. But ultimately you need to learn one thing. If it is not the word of the Lord, number one criteria in the pulpits, and that's one of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that you can think you have really achieved in this unique dispensation of the church age, though you have been greatly bestowed on these great privileges of all time. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide in the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Whether in the spirit or in the flesh you want to go, you take the route. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the great man is to preach the word, Kerusathon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, so that Bible doctrine can be number one criteria for you. And Bible doctrine alone is the word that we have to communicate under the mental ministry so that it can have its own value, reverence, and honor in this unseen angelic conflict. That I am out from my witnesses in dwelling trinity followed by the one which is bible in our hands and the people being our hearers that's the one who's going to hear a word if there are no hearers do not worry besides nature dear brethren the entire angelic course will be our hearers but prior to that what is required it is required for us to rightly divide the word of truth and for the mandate for the believers is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine so that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and besides this we don't have anything in this world to be communicated so you decide which way you want to go. Either you want to grow up in the spirit, or you want to preach in the spirit, or you want to live a life which is absolutely absence of the spirit. And not only just absence, but grieving and squelching and lying to the spirit, which will be clearly manifested at the judgment seat of Christ. So which way you want to go, you decide. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge sovereign, Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.